Don't look for dry boots. What's going on guys? This is Carl, the Racer Red channel. I just got done doing a live stream. That was pretty cool to talk to you guys. I think I want to do more of those. That way I get more of a live interaction with you guys. That was, that was pretty sweet. But this is the snow drift I just went up and it just ends abruptly right here. Straight onto a cliff. That's a cliff drop off right there. That's no bueno to fall off of. I'm kind of worried about even standing right here. That wouldn't be good. Beautiful view of the valley down there. Starting to get a lot more green, a lot more baby trees growing in. Big old fire rolled through here a while back. So all these mountains are still recovering from that. I don't know what it was caused by. Likely a, a lightning strike. It's usually what it is up in the mountains. What's going on guys? This is Carl, the Racer Red channel. My microphone had a malfunction today, so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of a voiceover. But it was a beautiful day today. Lots of clouds rolling in here and there, but it didn't really rain on me, so that was nice. But a little bit of overcast is actually nice to keep the sun off you when you're out here riding. The temperatures ranged Pretty, pretty widely. I think it ranged from about 60 degrees on up to around 80. And it actually did rain off and on a few times, but not while I was riding. So this trail had a, a couple somewhat technical sections to it. I actually didn't know this trail was here. I was just riding out a four-wheeler trail and this one intersected with it. So I took it up. It was really good soil all the way to the top. A lot of really loamy, nice chocolate cake soil that really uh, was good for traction. It was nice. You can see all these pines around here. All these pine trees are just completely burned. And, um, this stuff will grow back. It's just going to take a long time after that fire. A lot of stuff here is, uh, it's green again. It's just the trees are really small and not in this particular area there's uh, not there aren't very many trees growing in this this area right here but um, down in the valley especially it's getting pretty green again The Husqvarna TE250, that's the one I'm taking to Silver Mountain next week. So that should be a pretty fun time. Trying to get my clutch figured out. I, uh, I keep mentioning that, but that's my main thing I've been working on this week is getting that clutch dialed just right to where I can get the right contact points. I don't think it, uh, it, it hasn't been working right because this clutch apparently is not made for this bike. I got it for this bike and it's actually for the Magura clutch which is the clutch on this bike but um, the adjustment screw does not adjust on this bike just because it's clearly not made for it. I might run it still just because I really like how light the clutch pull is and I remember how exhausted I was last time I did this race and I couldn't pull in the clutch anymore 
like by day two I couldn't pull the clutch in so it would be nice to be able to pull the clutch in the entire race that would definitely be nice here I was very concerned about going down this snowbank um, all the way down this hill it's pretty steep and I was afraid I would start getting way too much momentum built up This area actually has a lot of recreational type stuff to do. You can fish, hike, mountain bike. There's a lodge down there where you can paddle boat. Actually, they have several different boats you can rent. So you can have anything from a fishing boat to recreational or just a uh, little paddle, paddle boat. I don't think it's too much. I think they're around 10 or $15 per hour. And it's a lot of fun. I actually uh, did catch one fish, pretty good size one, so got, a, got me a brook trout and have yet to cook it up, I'm definitely going to do that. That was a pretty sweet spot to go fishing though, it's really beautiful there. I got plenty of uh, drone footage of this area. This is a really good spot if you just want recreation um, as opposed to just riding dirt bikes. You know, I wouldn't have parked where I parked if I was just going to ride dirt bikes, that's for sure. I definitely enjoyed the hot springs. There's a lot of hot springs around here and the one with the hot tub is the hottest hot springs I've ever been to in my life. I actually made the mistake of just putting my leg in there and it was like boiling so I had to jump out as quickly as possible. There's a bucket right next to the tub and you can just grab some river water and keep filling the tub until you get the temperature down enough to where it feels about right. But keep in mind it will get hotter and hotter pretty quick because it's constantly fed by that hot spring. So you will boil yourself out um, if you don't keep adding water to it. But yeah, that's that's a really cool experience to sit in that hot tub. Yeah, it's a really cool area, really scenic. It's nice to just sit in there and, and sit back and relax. Um, Trail Creek Hot Spring is another one I visited during this trip. And that's another really nice one that's right next to the highway. Just just before you get to Stilly Meadows. You definitely have to be prepared to hike though when you do that one. You have to go down the hill a ways so definitely bring some water shoes that you can hike a little bit in. Um, maybe an eighth of a mile or something but you're definitely climbing down the hill there to get down to the hot springs. But it is definitely worth it. It's all built up and there's a lot of different pools you can go to. It's really nice. So yeah there's fishing and, and hiking, hot springs, Pretty much everything you would want to do out in the mountains is right here next to Warm Lake. There's a lodge right there and it's actually, um, it's fairly stocked. I mean, you can go in there and get a lot of the stuff that you need. There's water right there if you need to fill up your water tanks, your water bottles or anything like that. I go to the lodge and have a burger every now and then and it's really good food. Right here in this section of the video, I remember going down the hill and I was starting to talk about going around different logs that are in the trail and I was pointing out all the damage, the natural damage from either water runoff or earthquakes or um, fires, you know, I was making the point that basically the train that we ride through is is not some perfectly made sculpture, it's something that's always changing and moving. And when it changes and moves, it is completely damaged. And that's just a fact of life. It's not, we are just riding through a completely damaged area that, that is not balanced. Definitely something that I think is, is uh, really driven into our brains is that we are a parasite in everything we do. And it's really unfortunate because it makes people sick. When they think of themselves, they think, well, I'm a parasite. And that is the grossest thing you could think. But you're controllable that way. So, you know, if you think you're a parasite, then how much freedom would you expect if you believed that you were a parasite? And that, that's what it breaks down to right there. If you break free from that thought, then all of a sudden you're worth something and you do not want to be controlled. We're only causing a little track on the soil and a track is just where the grass is no longer growing 
there's nothing wrong with the track at all. And, uh, you know, people talk about water tables and how trails can affect water tables. That's a bunch of BS as well. And when you start to think about things through your own lens and you can do your own research and, and quit following the propaganda, you can really see clearly what is actually happening out there. You know, they, they talk about sediment and yet they ignore massive amounts of sediment brought into all the streams by elk and deer. And the reality is that a rolling wheel doesn't cause hardly any sediment. It, <laughs> flash floods cause huge damage and there's no way we can even compare against all that stuff. When you look at stuff from that perspective and you're seeing how it really happens, then you're able to say, oh, these guys aren't too bright. And they're either not too bright or they're just following blindly or they have an agenda. During this ride is one of my first ones using the tubeless up front and I have a brand new bib and tire in the rear. The tubeless beats bibs by far. I've ridden with uh, bibs for a couple years now and year one they worked okay. Year two they all wore out and started flopping off the rims while I'm riding. <laughs> They don't completely come off, but they fold over, and it's as bad as having a completely flat tire. I mean, it's really, really dangerous. I've been riding that way all year with my 450 in these desert races. I've been riding all of my bikes this year with bibs, you know. Um, some of you may remember that I crashed my Husqvarna out of nowhere a couple times this year. And that was because the bib was worn out. I had no idea, but the bib was worn out and it was folding over. <clears throat> the rim and making me crash so bibs are out for me they're way too expensive they wear out and cause crashes and it's just not even close to safe I think right now the best thing I found well it's kind of a tie I would rather do uh, I would rather do super heavy-duty tubes by far rather than bibs just because you can change them out easily and you can adjust the pressure as well but then you have tubeless and tubeless works pretty well right now I've got that on the front and even when it does go flat it doesn't feel like a flat tire so it's not nearly as severe of a flat as if you were running a bib or a tubed tire so I'm a big fan of tubeless right now um, but I'm also a big fan of just going back to tubes I think I'm just gonna do super heavy-duty tubes and that way you can switch them out when stuff does go wrong and it just makes a little bit more sense that way Anyways, guys, I hope you appreciate my little bit of commentary here. I will let you enjoy the video, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Nice view to my right there. One last time before I go. 